All right, let me show you just a, a few real basics of the Bezier curve. Now, the Bezier curve is the way that uh, we make curved lines. So instead of having a, bringing out a cylinder and having it be completely straight, we are going to curve it and give it some depth uh, for a 3D curve, like a cable or a cord um, or a string. And so that is uh, what we're going to do, learning Bezier. So let me just show you the basics. I'm going to get rid of this cube. So I will delete it. And in my cursor, Shift S, I want it to go to the center. Doesn't really matter. Um, I'm now going to Shift A or come go to my Add menu. And instead of a mesh, I am going to come down to the next one. We're going to branch out beyond the mesh menu. And we're going to go down to here to Curve. And that first one on there is a Bezier curve. So if I click on the Bezier curve, some of you may have gotten one of these before and wondered what it was. Well, I'm going to show you a little bit about it this time. Now, um, in object mode, it's just a kind of a little curved line. But we're going to hit Tab. I'm going to hit Tab and go into Edit Mode. So in Edit Mode, there's a couple things here that you might recognize, uh, especially if you've done Illustrator, Adobe Illustrator, if you learn that, and the Pen tool. This is very similar to that. And so I've got a couple of anchor points, one right here and one right there. And that starts my line. And then the, the handles on the anchor points determine the curve and how much curve there is. So I'm going to go to a top view, 7 on my keypad. And I can click on the an anchor point and hit G to move it around to wherever I want. And then I can right click on a handle and hit G. And that uh, changes the, the curve and how intense the curve is. So I can make it a small curve or a really big curve. And I can change both sides of it. This is for the next line that I will extrude out. So here I can change it however I want. So really, by clicking the anchor points, hitting G, I can move the anchor points around. Clicking the, or selecting the handles and hitting G, I can move the curve how I want it. Now, if I click on an anchor point and extrude, E to extrude, it gives me another line, another curve, and I can change that how I want by hitting G on the handles. And I can make this curve go wherever I want, continue to extrude, and clicking on the handles and hitting G, I can make it go wherever I want. Okay. Now, now that I'm in my, since I'm in my top view, it's completely flat. If I pan around, it's totally flat. And if I want it to not be flat, I just change the view to something on the side, grab an anchor point, hit G, and I can bring it down to wherever I want. And of course, by, by controlling my angles and which angle I'm at, that's important, especially with this Bezier curve, because if you're not at a certain angle, you can't really tell where it's going. So I like to be either on my front view or side view or top view to make sure that I know what my curve is actually doing. And then rotating around every once in a while. Okay, I've got a totally random curve here. And now I'm going to show you how we make a mesh out of it so that we can make a model. So if I come over to my menu over here, first I'm going to hit tab to go out to object mode. And my menu, if I uh, scroll over to the Bezier Curve tab and click on it. I'm going to extend it a little bit because there's some options that uh, I need to read. Okay, the first thing is this fill right here. I'm going to fill it, but I don't want to fill it halfway. That's default. I want to fill it the full all the way around. Okay, and so I've got resolution here, and that's how curved it is. If I bring that down, you'll be able to tell real quick that uh, it's how many lines there are between each segment. So I'm going to bring that up to maybe 25. That's usually a pretty good curve. You don't want to go too high because when we make this a mesh, it adds faces and vertices, and, and there's going to be way too many if we make it go really high. So I like about 25. It's a nice curve. Now, uh, depth here is an important one, of course, because that gives us our 3D look. So if I click and drag on that, you'll see real quick that there's my 3D look to it. And it's just a square. It's not rounded at all. So to round it, if you want a square, that's great. But to round it, you use this resolution right here. It's at 0. And if I click and drag that and pull it up to um, maybe 10 or 15, or 15 for now, and it makes a nice curve all the way around. 
if I zoom in real far, I can kind of see that it's a little bit choppy. I can increase this if I need to, maybe 30. Okay, so there's my uh, curve right there. Uh, well, my my bezier that I have created a uh, some depth out of. Um, there's some other things like extrude. Extrude's cool because then I can make it uh, come out like this, and I can give it a make it flat. I can make a ribbon or something like that. Um, if I did a round circle, I could make a tire out of it. And it looks like a, you know, give it, extrude it a little bit, and it makes it look like a tire. Or really, it just depends on what object we're using. We can make anything out of it. Offset just uh, puts it, you know, outside the line or inside the line, however much. So I'll leave that at zero for now. Okay, those are the very basics. Now, uh, what I do with that to be able to change it? Um, now I can still go tab in, and I can still change my handles and my cur uh, anchor points until I'm ready to make it an object. And so when I finally want to use it for my model, I need to make it a mesh. So I go out, I tab out to object mode, and if I do an Alt C, then I have an option to convert to a curve or convert to mesh. It's already a curve, so I'm going to convert it to a mesh. And if I hit that, it is now a mesh. If I now go back into edit mode, it's a mesh as we recognize it. It's just got all those curves on it. And then I can change it how I want. I can select faces or vertices and do whatever I want with it after that. So those are the very basics of the Bezier curve. And we can play around with it and do a whole lot of things with it.